Boy, howdy ya. Uh, I made a big boo-boo this time, y'all. I am I recommended a channel that I thought was, um, had gotten a terrific revelation from the Lord about the, um, you know, three days or 40 day trial and then there were three 40 day trials anyway the channel was Jesus Child and this most recent video is called Rapture One Last Plea and Warning okay well the warning I couldn't listen to it all she starts off by thanking me for giving her a shout out and hoping that brought me the encouragement that I needed Honey, that's not at all why I recommended your channel. I thought your teaching was made sense, and I wanted others to hear it and discern it for themselves to learn by it. Well, then she goes on to talk about how, basically, in a nutshell, praying in tongues is only of, of a kundalini spirit. If you have subscribed to this woman, I would suggest you unsubscribe immediately. I did. And I'm sorry, uh, you know, well, no, I'm not sorry. I recommended your channel, so I have to unrecommend you. You're wrong. And I pulled up uh, a list of verses here. And I could make this an hour-long video, but there's no need to. The fact of the matter is, praying in tongues is for today. And it's not these churches telling us. It's the Bible. It's the Holy Scriptures. It's Jesus Christ himself who gave me a message saying, Praying in tongues is being intimate with him. It's part of. Our intimate relationship. We're told in Ephesians, and it's probably even in here. Let's see if it's one of the ones listed. Wow, that's a big thing. There. No, that one's not even in here. Ephesians chapter 6, part of our armor. We're told to put on the armor of God for our, our weapons of war. Let's see. Our war is not against flesh and blood. See, my war is not with any person. There's obviously a lying spirit has infiltrated people's minds or, or belief systems to believe this. I was just listening to another man that I had started listening to a while back. I thought his teaching was wonderful until he said that praying in tongues or praying in the spirit was not necessarily praying in tongues. That It was just that you're in the spirit praying intimately with the Lord. No, he's wrong. Praying in tongues is not a known language it is not one that can be interpreted it's not French now it has been it can be God can do anything and that has been known to happen even today that someone will uh, be heard praying in tongues and a person of a foreign country will say wow that was quite a prophecy you gave me, or, or prophetic word, or whatever. And I'll go, what? What do you mean? Oh, I know what it was, the most recent one I heard. The man said to this person who was praying in tongues, you said that uh, you speak beautiful uh, Hebrew. And they said, what? I don't know Hebrew. He, I was just praying in the spirit and he said well you were praying in Hebrew I understand it fluidly and told him I think basically what he said now where which video I could never remember now it's been at least a week probably 
But let me just go over some of these scriptures for my subscribers' sake so you'll understand. If you're, uh, if you've missed the videos where I have done teachings on this. For in him you have been enriched in every, this is 1 Corinthians 1 5. And this, I don't know what the version is. Um, it doesn't say, and this is clearly not King James. Uh, oh, but I can pull up the parallel. But this is, for in him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. Let's see what, I'm going to click on parallel. Okay, that was the New International Version. Um, well, this says New International Version. Why would they parallel it with the same version? That makes no sense. I don't know how to use this uh, thing. And now i got to go back to my list to find my list. All right, I'm going to pull up a new tab and open up Blue Letter Bible because I want to see how that is read. Um, in the King James, even though it's not always right. All right, so that was 1 Corinthians 1, 5. I am going to prove to you that, yes, praying in tongues is for today. All right, the KJV says that in everything ye are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge. Now, praying in tongues has been known to be called utterance. Let me see here. I'm going to pull up that word. Oh, I've got this thing so blowed up that it's. I'm going to have to reduce the letter size because it's overlapping. Okay, let's try that. That in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Okay, now, going down, word utterance is logos. In all utterance. All right, logos is uh, words, I think. But let me look. Word, saying, account, speech, the word, capital W, which is Christ, thing, not translated in miscellaneous. Okay, so that's not really... Um, wait a minute, let me go on down this longer list. I don't really know why they put in that particular verse because to me that is not... A verse about praying in tongues. Okay, so let's move on. I'm going to leave that tab open in case we want to look up another one. Acts 2 4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, keep in mind, this is talking about the day of Pentecost. When about 120 people were in the upper room where Jesus had had his last supper with the apostles. They're in the same place, if I'm not mistaken. And they're all praying in one accord, waiting for the Lord to send them the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. They didn't know what to expect. And as we read in the Word of God, it appeared tongues of fire, what appeared to be tongues of fire, landed on each of them. And they began to, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. Okay, this is praying in the Spirit. 
as the Spirit enabled them. Some of them, like Peter, got out on the balcony and started praying in an unknown tongue one sermon. But all these men that had come to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost, because it was one of the Jewish holidays, holy days, they came from different regions and areas and countries, and they understood what he said in their own language. That was a, a miracle of of a whole other kind that we don't see anywhere else. But it was, God has, His ways are so much higher than our ways. His thoughts are so above our thoughts. And he, I'm sure He had His reasons. I mean, can you imagine if, if He had Peter give the good news and then do it again, and then do it again, and then do it again, so that each different group and country, men from all the different countries would understand. He had them all understand the same one prophecy, whatever Peter spoke. And of course, people accused them of being drunk. And no, it was nine o'clock in the morning this was all a miracle. Now, what the lady on uh, Jesus' child said that we're not able to uh, just start it and stop it. Well, I beg to differ with you because I can, I do, but I couldn't always. I used to have to be in a real, uh, like put on praise and worship music, start praying in English, and then I would, it's like the Holy Spirit would just start speaking in tongues, but I wouldn't say a whole lot. Like I always said the same few sentences, and I remember distinctly they always ended with, Come on my, Lord Jesus, come on my. So I even had that English, Lord Jesus, was in there. Then a Baptist preacher told me, I'd better stop doing that because praying in tongues today was only of the devil. That ended when the apostles died, which is called, that's the doctrine of cessationism. You see, that is a lie from the pit of hell that Satan has passed on through the Baptist church and maybe other denominations. I don't know. I just know them because I was one for seven years with my second husband because that's what he was. So I agreed to go to his kind of church and so I learned a whole lot about Southern Baptists and the way they believed. And I became more and more uncomfortable. So when we moved and we were near this non-denominational church, it turned out to be more like a Pentecostal church than non-denominational. I loved it. And I said, how about we go here for a while? We went to your kind of church for seven years. How about we go here for a while and just see how you like it? And he agreed and he ended up liking it. Anyway, on with the scriptures. Acts 19.6 When Paul placed his hands... Oh, wait, I got to go back to my story about the Baptist preacher. Was at my uncle's funeral now. Funeral's over. We're, uh, my mom and dad and I were at my aunt's comforting her and staying with her a few days after that. The Baptist preacher comes over that had done a funeral. And we got to talking, and that's when he ended up telling me I needed to stop praying in tongues because that was of the devil. And I had not heard of that in that church. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I was divorced from, from my second husband. And I, I thought, I don't ever remember Pastor Quinn saying that. 
Well, anyway, so I go home. When I get home after all, you know, we stayed with her a few days, and when my daughter came back to get us, took us home. She had driven us, and she came back and picked us up. I started praying. I got on my knees, and I mean, I was uh, seeking the Lord. I said, Lord, if this is of the devil, I want nothing to do with it. I want you to take it away. Don't ever let me pray in tongues again. Because I don't want to have anything to do with demons or praying in tongues if it's of a demon. Otherwise, increase my voca vocabulary and allow me to speak fluidly whenever I want to pray for people and I don't know what to say for them. Well, I started praying in tongues. I can start praying in tongues and I can stop praying in tongues when I'm done or when the Holy Spirit is done. Sometimes I don't Sometimes it'll just come over me. It'll be the Holy Spirit. It'll just, I'll be praying in English or just singing. I'll just be singing praise and worship. And I'll start praying in tongues. Not intentionally. It just comes on. And then it'll just end when the Holy Spirit's done. Praying for whoever I'm praying for. I have no idea. But I know that I know that I know. That it is not a kundalini spirit. So y'all don't need to worry about that. If you hear that on any other channels. There are people who just don't understand. That this is a precious beautiful gift. There's even a video on YouTube. Where a doctor. At the University of uh, Oral Roberts University. Did a study doing a brain scan on people, having them pray in tongues. To see, I could be a participant in that because I am fluid in it now. I could lay there, and it might might even take a few seconds in a thing like that. You know, you're in a medical scanning room and all. You know, I might have to pray a minute in English, or maybe not. But when you, you know can do it you, you can do it you either have the gift or you don't have the gift it is not like when you get a prophecy like when the Lord chooses to give you a prophecy yeah we don't have control of that if you're getting you have control you can turn on a prophecy I, I would be really seeking the Lord heavy on that because he does choose when and where and how to give us prophecy dreams and visions okay moving on with praying in the spirit Acts 19 6 when Paul placed his hands on them the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied <sighs> Let me go over here. Acts 19.6 Of all the versions, this is done in NIV. Alright. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Okay. So, it does say they prophesied. But not all praying in tongues is prophecy. In fact, if it is prophecy, it needs to be interpreted. Paul makes that clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 or 14. Those are the two chapters that really give it, go into great detail on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And... As you're fixing to find out, it's not to be confused with the fruit. Okay, this is coming up next. Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance or patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That must be in chapter 23, but because this stops with faithfulness. But anyway, these are the fruits. They say you will know them by their fruit. Okay. If somebody's claiming to be a Christian, this is one of the ways you can tell how mature they are in Christ. How are they reading their word? Are they truly a Christian? If they're not showing love, they're never joyful. They never seem to have peace or they lose it easy. I mean... Uh, an immature Christian, it's a baby Christian, they're not going to have all nine fruits right off the bat. It, you develop them. You're, you, you know, you should be more kind, more patient, faithful, you know, right away. You should see changes in people. But for us all to have all nine perfectly, I don't think we ever do until we get our glorified body. All right, Mark 16, 17 says, this is Jesus talking. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. And it goes on to mention a few other things. But this is... Um, well, let me pull it up. Mark 16, 17. They're just trying to give you the first part, I guess, to um, to list. Because I typed in scriptures uh, uh, about speaking in tongues. And, I, and this happened to be on there this week website and then done in the NIV. Anyway, Mark 16, 17 is, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up ser Okay, see this is verse 18. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, this is this is not to say you're supposed to go around picking up deadly snakes just to test God or drinking poison. This is talking about if someone tries to poison you, and you're praying like you should, living like you should, you're claiming no weapon formed against me will prosper. It's not supposed to hurt you. It says it shall not hurt them. Again, they shall lay hands on the sick. Some people can ha have that gift. Others, I don't. I have prayed for people. Now, the lady I prayed for down on the second floor, her leg is a lot better. It's a hundred percent better from last week. So, the Lord is healing it, but it wasn't immediate. So, you know, I think we just have to do it and know that some people aren't going to be healed. That's, that's in Father's hands. People have prayed for me. I've had a miraculous heart healing. It got me off all my drugs. The one heart drug was causing depression. The depression was aggravating the abnormal movements. I was able to get off the medicine for my heart, for depression, and for the abnormal movements for about six to eight months or so because of that heart healing. Why didn't it stick? I don't know. I don't know. That was in 2001. And the Lord let me be like, nearly a hundred percent for a little while and I appreciated it and I don't ask questions I don't think I opened any doors I was growing closer and closer because going to that Assemblies of God church and learning and 
He was like Pastor Sandy. He used a lot of Hebrew. Anyway, let's move on. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, 2. All right, here's uh, Corinthians. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Now, this is the gift of personal tongues, not prophecy, which needs interpretation. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. Because we don't know. If somebody says, please pray for my pray for me or pray for my husband or pray for my son or whoever and they don't even give you a, a why well if you have this gift you don't have to know why the Holy Spirit knows every detail and exactly why they're asking for prayer and you just can start praying in the spirit and yes you have control over it you should have Okay, so let's move on to 1 Corinthians 14, 23. So if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and inquires or unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your mind? Well, I think this is talking about, uh, see, this is why we can control it and must control it. When you're in church and you don't have the gift of prophesying in tongues, you just pray in personal tongues. But if everybody just did it out loud and everybody it would sound like blabbering or gibberish or whatever word people call it, and they they might say, these people are out of their mind, and you'll they may turn around and walk out you know or a person that's sitting there they'd be like what in the world you know they're like a, maybe a visitor they're gonna leave you know you're gonna lose them so there's order in things that is something for you to do in your prayer time by yourself or very quietly to yourself many times in church I couldn't help it I just had to you know I was like a very little low whisper but I had to just pray in tongues all right now this is first Corinthians 14 27 through 28 if anyone speaks in a tongue two or at the most three should speak one at a time and someone must interpret this is talking about the other gift when you know you have a gift of prophesying in tongues, you must have an interpreter. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. But now, uh, it should say, pray that you can interpret. Hold on a second. 1 Corinthians 14. Whoops. 14. Uh, what did I do? Well, I'll just have to... Oh, I was over here. 27. Okay. I hope I haven't lost y'all yet. There's a reason for all this. I mean, this is just a lesson. It's it's a teaching, and, and I hope that I'm making sense. I mean, I'm just reading scripture, and this is the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He said, we will speak in tongues. If you don't want to, you won't. If you got some kind of a, it might even be subconscious, a block. Because you've heard it's not for today. Or you've heard it's of the devil or a kundalini spirit. Because a lot of people are saying this. And it's just not true. It's a beautiful gift. And it does something for you. But it's also glorifying the Father and Jesus. 
our Savior and Lord and King. Okay, if any man, this is in King James now. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. I, I think that means in, in order, or I mean one at a time. I don't remember saying it like that, by course. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Well, there's somewhere that says let him pray, pray that he may interpret it. Because I remember looking that up when a former from that Baptist church I went to, our music minister, uh, married my best friend from where I worked. And so he was over at our house. He would started doing computers, putting building computers on the side at home, ordering parts, putting it all together, selling it as a bundle to make extra money. And he, we bought computers off of him for my girls when, uh, anyway, when their dad died and they got an inheritance. Well, the judge let us buy them computers. Okay, so he was over putting one of them's together. And we got to talking about this. And he said, uh, when I said something about, oh, this lady at this new church we're going to, she... It is just so beautiful when she stands up and she gives a prophecy in tongues. And then if nobody interprets, she'll start interpreting. And I said that she is just so gifted. And he said, I don't know, that sounds demonic to me or something like that. Well, I looked it up later. Buddy, buddy, be quiet. Quiet. Sorry. Anyway, um... Buddy, please. Shh. Uh, there's a verse that says that. So now he's got me off track. Okay, let me go back to my list. All right, now this is talking about why we receive different gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11 says, To one... There is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. See, some people have more wisdom than others, but we should all desire it, uh, more wisdom. We shouldn't say, well, I just don't have that gift and be satisfied without any wisdom. We Proverbs is full of talking about wisdom. Read Proverbs if you don't know. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. Some people are more uh, able to delve into the scriptures and pull out things just better than others, okay? It, to me, that's a gift. Uh, not that we shouldn't all try to always grow spiritually through our Bible study. To another, faith. Some people have faith like nobody's business. But shouldn't we all want it? I think so. And to another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. See right there. Gifts of healing. That tells me right there we aren't going to all heal. I don't think it should keep us from trying. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. Some people prophesy in English. They'll just stand up in church or not even in church necessarily. But they'll just prophesy in English. That's like when the Holy Spirit gives us a message. He gives it in English and we write it down as he's dictating it. So I guess that would be that. And to another, distinguishing between spirits. Some people have better ability to discern. Oh, that person's got a kundalini spirit versus, no, that person's anointed. 
see they can tell a difference. Some of us have to listen a little longer, check them out a little more, or just leave them alone if you're not sure. All right, to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. I'm not real sure what that means. I thought they were speaking in tongues. Perhaps the Lord allows some people to speak. This is where the foreign language part comes in. But and to steal another, the interpretation of tongues. But I'm not sure on that. This may be worded wrong. This is 12, 8 through 11. Twelve, eight. Let's go there. Oh, I put a thirteen. All right. I'm going to see how it's worded in the King James. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit to another faith. This is King James. To another, the gifts of healing. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit. Dividing to every man severally as he will. Yeah, so we're not going to all heal. And we're not going to all have gift of prophecy and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Alright, now this is the most important thing of all. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Many people call it the love chapter. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, which is the heavenly language, praying in tongues is a heavenly language, the personal gift of praying in tongues. If I have this, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. Pause. That number five, it does not dishonor others, is not to say you don't call someone out for being wrong. We can't just all get along for peace sake, for the sake of peace. We This coexist or unity thing is wrong. We can't, we cannot tolerate lies of the devil, all right? It comes from a demon, the lying spirits, which Get it from their father, the devil, okay? That's not the same as just dishonoring people because you don't like them or whatever. There's other ways other than calling them out for saying something that's not true. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And boy, we, you know, we're not perfect at this. None of us are. I, if you're never angry, there might be something wrong with you. The Bible says, to be, be angry, but sin not. Do not let 
the sun go down on your anger. That's a scripture. You, you get angry. Sometimes we have really good reasons to get angry. But you have to deal with it. And put it to rest. Forgive a person. If a person made you angry, forgive that person. Find a way. Pray for them until you're not angry. Do not sin because of the anger. Okay. Love is patient, kind, does not envy, does not boast. Okay, where was I? It is not easily angered. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Once all, all this, the prophecies of the end times start happening and pass, and the, the seven years of tribulation, the great tribulation are over, Jesus has come, all this will cease. Um, the prophecies will cease because they'll be fulfilled. Well, eventually. I mean, because there are some prophecies that have to do with after the thousand-year millennial reign. Let's face it. But they will eventually cease. But love... Uh, keep losing my place. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Now, that's got to be the kind where you're prophesying in tongues. Well, once we're in heaven, we will all know the heavenly language. So it won't be... I, I, you know, I don't really know. I've heard people that have died, gone to heaven, came back, say everything is telepathic. But I find it hard to believe we're never going to open our mouth and utter anything. I know we'll sing. Why would we not talk? Are we going to all talk in Hebrew? Perhaps? And there'll be no other language. That's what I think. Something like that. But I don't know for sure. I just know there won't be more than one kind of language. Okay, moving on. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. And where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. Um... This next one is really, really long. It is 1 Corinthians 14. They put the whole chapter, which you can read. It, it goes into the gifts and more, you know, uh, more about it instead of just a few verses. All right, so I hope I've made my point. The gift, the gifts, the gift of praying in the Spirit, to summarize, it is for today. It is the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. That was not included in there. Not in the NIV. Well, it was. It just didn't spell it out clearly in those ones. But it said when they laid their hands on them, they, began to, they were filled with the Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance however it was worded. It is the evidence. And it's praying in English is not praying in the Spirit or whatever your native tongue is. It's just not. It's a heavenly language. It's the language of angels. Okay? And if you want it and you're praying for it, even fasting, I hope. God will know your heart. Okay? It's like, I really desire to be able to lay hands on people, pray for them, and have them be healed. But 
if I don't receive that as a gift, then it may not happen, you know? Not in this body. When I come back, I know we will be, all of us. I just know it. I just have a knowing about it. We're going to even raise people from the dead. So anyway, I'm going to end this here because it's gone on long enough. But I just wanted you all to know, if you have any doubt, don't let anybody tell you praying in tongues is never of God, that you have no control over it because you do. You should be able to if someone said, would you please pray for me? I really need you to pray for me now. I'm just in a bad way or whatever. They came, came to you and you let them in or whatever. And so you don't know what to pray for. You should be able to lay your hands on them and say, something even if you start in english you should be able to start praying in the spirit because otherwise you're just going to be speaking out of your own knowledge you don't know what's going on you know what i'm saying and that is i mean it's better than nothing for, for, to, I'm not saying, well, I can't pray in tongues, so I, you know, unless you tell me a bunch of details, I don't know what to pray for. We don't have to be that way either, okay? Don't misunderstand me. If you don't have the gift yet, and someone asks you to pray for them, then you just say what, what comes to your heart. And say, you know, always finish in Jesus' name, I pray. Be sincere. And the Lord will honor that. Okay, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, and over each and every one of you as well, and over all our devices and internet connections, and so we can stay connected until we're gone and out of here. And keep looking up, because our redemption draws nigh. I feel like it's soon. I don't know how soon. But we're going home. Jesus has promised it. And the first fruits rapture will be just as in the days of Noah. There will be eating and drinking, not running for your lives. There will be marrying and giving in marriage and life basically as usual. That's what the word says. I go by what the word says. Okay, with that I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.